What's up, collectors? Welcome back to another Criterion Adventure video with my good buddy Connor, who's staying with me this week at the very beginning of July for the 50% off sale with Barnes & Noble. We have been having a great time. We've hit up two stores already. We are on the way to our third. Yes, sir. This is a good store. Um, I've been here a few times, and it's not the biggest selection ever, but they've got good stuff. Got a good stuff. So uh, I did like a, a recon mission a couple weeks ago before the sale started to kind of just read a bunch of the backs and that helped me write this list it was kind of looking through those and seeing what I wanted to pick so that I know they have a lot of good stuff here and we'll see if you can find some good stuff here because yesterday was a little bit of a bust for you it was it was uh, you know at the end of the last video I said the, the biggest mistake I made was I you can't plan for too much of a plan with this especially for hitting all these different stores you don't know what the different preferences are of people who live in there you don't know what the inventory is going to be you don't know how passionate maybe the people who work there are about making sure they're all stocked up like the barnes and noble right next to me uh the guy who was in charge of like getting the criterion there is all about making sure he's got the best selection but you know maybe not everyone's fortunate enough to have that kind of guy but uh, i am i am hopeful I'm going to trust your word, uh, but I'm trying to get Mishima. That's the big one. That's been eluding me since the first store. I'm still on the lookout for a John Cassavetes. Uh, that's the box set I'm getting this. this uh, but I'm hoping to get some 4Ks, looking primarily for Devil Indemnity, Shaft, um, uh, For All Mankind, and The Last Wall. So those are two documentaries. And um, documentaries in 4K sound like they'd be really cool. So cool. I'm going to be looking out for the 4Ks and... Um, the ones that have gotten away so far. That's kind of what I've got my eyes peeled on. Okay, okay. I've still got a few uh, starred ones on my list that I definitely want to pick up. We know the Jacques Tati box set is... I'm still on the hunt for that. Hopefully we can find one of those here. The Passion of Joan of Arc, uh, I really want. We already did a country in corner that, so I have to own that one. Because uh, I really liked it. There's a, a good bit of stuff left on here that I need to pick up. So I'm hoping we have a good run. This third store, three out of four. Three out of four ain't bad. We're getting close to the end here, though, so we've got to we've got to start we've got to start finding stuff. It's bittersweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, I guess I guess it's the bitter part of it is I, I don't have a big stack. I'm looking over at yours. I'm like, I, yeah. I got to get some of that. <laughs> yeah, I've got I got seven at both stores, so hopefully I can keep that going and pick up seven here. Hopefully we'll see what they have. Put me to shame. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, let's go into this third store and see what we can find. Let's and do we'll it. Show you guys everything we got in just a minute. from the store we got another haul haul number three let's show them what we got Come yeah what did you get this time did you have a good haul did you have a good shopping experience this, this time was it another bust this was a redeemer experience i have to say yes. this store was probably uh, my favorite of the ones we've been to that this first was a nice one i told you this was a nice one it was really nice the first one was also pretty pretty awesome as well um, i just did not take advantage. the proper advantage of it um, so I, I guess I only got, if we're comparing to what you get, if we considered that first haul seven, I only got three. However, I did find the John Cassavetes five films <gasps> box set, and it was in really nice condition. So nice. It was behind the counter, did not have the stupid security wire over it. 
Um, this, of course, is spy number 250, 251, 252, 253, 254, and 255. This includes the films Shadows from 59, Faces from 68, A Woman Under the Influence, The Killing of a Chinese Bookie, uh, two versions of the movie, actually, uh, one from 1976, one from 1978, and Opening Night wow. from the year 1977. So he did a Hitchcock slash Chaplin and re remade his own movie? It appears, yeah, I think they might be the same movie, more, more of a Chaplin situation. Or just going to recut, okay. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, I have not seen any of John Cassavetti's films. My only experience with him is as an actor in the film Rosemary's Baby. Oh. But a lot of people swear by him as a director. I know that in one for one of these movies, I think it was a woman under the influence. He was just nominated for Best Director. And that was like the only nomination at the Oscars that that film got. Like no like acting nominations, just directed. Mm. Somebody... Down below, probably correct me if I'm wrong. Correct in the comments, as um, always. I'm really excited to have these. I know Barry Jenkins says that this is a, a film school in five films. And so if Barry Jenkins is telling you... Dang, that's high praise. You should probably, you should probably lis listen. It's so. a beautiful box set. I've just noticed this for the first time. This little color bars at the bottom. Yeah, the color bars which coincide with each film has its own little color shadows is a bit of a kind of a foresty green is this a bonus features disc and this is blank not a disc this is actually the booklet oh um and this is actually really cool because you know they have essays for all of the films mm -hmm. but the essays are color coded on the page so this is the uh, essay for faces and then you know when we get to kind of that mustard yellow color yellow is faces yeah green is shadows shadows faces and then a woman under the influence so i think that's a really cool design all around i like it um, i love when they do the when they separate them by color my uh jacques demi set up there is separated by color the tati set is also separated by color it's really cool and i like the gray scale they kind of went with um general kind of gray along the border of course this picture has a bit of a blue tint to it but yeah, all around, I'm excited to finally jump into these. I probably mm -hmm. will do that probably the holiday season this year. Oh, uh, that's cool. The way I did for something like Lone Wolf and Cub or the Godzilla films uh, last year. So Interesting. So you dive into box sets around Christmas time. I guess so. Um, at some point, I know I want to get the Zatoichi box set. And I thought about because that's 25 films watching that Jeez. every day in December until... Christmas, um, but I don't know about that. I might get a little burnt out if I'm watching one of those a day. Mm -hmm. uh, the next on my list, again, Total Redeemer. I've been looking we, for this the whole time. Yes, this is Paul Schrader's Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters. This lovely... One of the most beautiful digipacks they have. Look, it's like we got this reflective gold um, kind of base... And then this wonderful artwork um, that carries around. Um, look, look at that. It's like reflecting off onto like your walls and shelves. And then you open it up. Um, and then it has the same design, but it's got gold highlights with a black base. Um, this is actually one of the movies I have seen. My friend Rory, this is his favorite movie. And one day at the beginning of the year, he just sat me and another friend of mine down and had us watch watch Mishima. Great, great movie about <laughs> artists and their art and why artists tend to gravitate towards politics as they maybe start to realize that what they're wanting to communicate in their art isn't having the effect they necessarily want. This is a biopic about a very controversial figure. I was going to say, this looks very propaganda, the, the horror yes. style. Um, oh, it's so good. Um I, I really like this movie, and I cannot wait to show this to my brother, who I think would probably like this even more than I do. I don't know if you would like it as much as I do. I think you would definitely like it, because there are some... I would like the visuals, for sure. This, there are sequences that are pure eye candy. Um, but, you know, you and my brother have an overlap, and I think something like Passion of Joan of Arc and mm -hmm. Seventh Seal would fall under that. But uh, this is something that probably falls under me and my brother's like Venn diagram overlap. But uh, all right, all right. 
That's the second one. And lastly, my first 4K pickup is... Of this month. Of this month. Yes, that, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> is Martin Scorsese's The Last Waltz. This is one of the most celebrated concert films in all of existence. This is about the rock band, The Band. Uh, very creative with the name there. Um, and I am really excited to watch this because of its reputation. It is Scorsese, but it's a bit of a documentary and concert film. I really want to start watching documentaries in 4K. One that I have been on the lookout for is For All Mankind, mm -hmm. which is about the first landing on the moon. Which we saw the Blu-ray for today, but not the 4K. That is true. Same with Shaft. We can talk about that a little later. Um, but uh, I picked up The Last Waltz. I'm excited to add this to my collection. So those are my pickups. Really only these three, but uh, seven films total, if you're counting the five film set as five. That's true. I also like that I got a box set, a digipack, and just a regular jewel case. Ah. Yeah, I kind of ran the gambit there. Running all the formats. Anyways, sir, Mr. DJ, what did you get? I got a bag full of goodies. Let's see what's here. Same amount that I got the last two days. I've been keeping it consistent. This first one here is probably the one I know least about. Mm -hmm. This was almost bought purely on the cover art because it's so cool. Um, but I also know a little bit about this one. So I mentioned, I think I've mentioned previously that I put out an, an APB on like fairy tale, surreal kind of films on the Facebook group. And I got a lot of feedback and this was one of the ones that was mentioned a lot of japanese films came up actually <laughs> this is a japanese film called koneko I'm, sure, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it but you can't okay see that it's showing up on camera that's so great. I'm glad awesome. so there's there's a woman figure in the woods that that like as you turn it it's not lenticular but i don't know i actually don't know how this was printed like i'm it's looking one, at it now and it looks like it's just the foggy woods yeah it's one of the coolest covers i've ever seen because it's not lenticular it's just a standard discard but they were able to make it where the woman's figure completely disappears depending on which way you have the blu-ray facing which is so cool um so i'm assuming she's some kind of spirit like yeah. mystical uh, character in this film. This is said to be a poetic and atmospheric horror fable, which sounds right up my alley. I mean, I'm not the biggest horror guy, but if fables. It's, I, I actually am a fantastical horror guy. Like, if it's fantasy, if it's more of a fairy tale, like fable style horror movie instead of like a serial killer. I'm not really into serial killer movies, but also it's in the 60s, which I love. 60s is one of my favorite decades for film up there with the 30s. So I'm very excited to check this out. I was told that this was uh, going to be something that I was interested in based on the fairy tale movies that I posted in that group. So it sounds like it's right up my alley, and I'm very excited to check it out. This is the second Japanese fable movie I got, The Ballad of Narayama, I got mm. yesterday. Um, so I might watch these kind of close together because they, they they seem like a little similar vein. So uh, based on your life, I don't know if you can do a double feature, but those would be a nice a nice pairing. It would be a double feature. I've got two kids, so I don't know if I'll be able to make that happen. But maybe in the same week, I kind of yeah. check those out. So I'm excited to check out uh, Kuroneka, and then my next one going from Japan all the way over to Spain. I actually don't know if he's from Spain, but it is a Spanish film. <laughs> it is a filmmaker that inspired Guillermo del Toro, which we were just looking at the Criterion channel earlier today and him talking about this director. This is El Sur by Victor Arice? Arice? I'm not sure exactly how to say it, but El Sur is his film that he made after The Spirit of the Beehive. I did not find The Spirit of the Beehive. That is on my list. Um, but they a DVD not. only a DVD. There is no Blu-ray for that, um, but I'm still gonna I'm still gonna check it out if I can find it. I wasn't able to find it today, so I went with El Sur instead. This seems like another thing that I would really appreciate. It's very much in the vein of Guillermo del Toro. A lot of both of his films are about small children and about childhood <laughs> itself and about and their fantasy films it sounds it sounds right up my alley i don't actually know what the story is of this one but based on what i know about his first film and just how much he's inspired Guillermo del toro i'm excited to check out el sur 
What's up guys, just wanted to jump in here real quick because something strange happened in my recording and it cut out the entire section where I talked about Nightmare Alley. So I wanted to put this back in so you guys weren't leaving a bunch of comments down below asking me why I didn't talk about this. So this is Nightmare Alley. I picked this up on the third day, obviously. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm so excited to finally get this. I've been uh, looking forward to this for several reasons. First of all, Connor highly recommended it to me. He's been telling me to watch it for a while. He watched it a few months back and really, really liked it. Secondly, I just really like anything that has to do with circus or carnival, any anything in that aesthetic. I just gravitate towards it. I really like that aesthetic. And uh, this apparently does not disappoint in that arena, just like the remake. Thirdly, I watched the remake last year by Guillermo del Toro, and I really, really like that film, and I want to see the original now. And lastly, I watched The Mark of Zorro last year for the first time. Absolutely loved it. That is a great, great film, and Tyrone Power is so charming and so likable in that movie. He is just as much of a swashbuckling powerhouse as Errol Flynn, in my opinion. He gives a fantastic performance in that, and I can't wait to see his performance in this. I've heard he's excellent in this as well, so... Can't wait to check this out for so many reasons. Let me get this. First of all, look at that beautiful red and gold aesthetic. Got that color scheme carried all the way through. Open it up. The disc is incredible. It's got a, the Ferris wheel on the disc, which is so clever. Looks great. You've also got these kind of tarot style cards in here, which are really cool with all the characters on them. And they are just in there next to the booklet. So if you get your disc and you hear kind of a shaking around in there, don't worry, it's not the disc loose, which is what I thought. It is actually these cards in there. And also, like always, you get your essays on a nice little fold out here, but it's got this beautiful carnival call sheet looking visual style, which is awesome. Opens up to some monochromatic photos. It all looks really, really nice, and I'm so excited to check this one out soon. That's Nightmare Alley. And with that, I'll pass it back to myself and Connor from a week ago. Next up, I've got the Harold Lloyd film, The Kid Brother. I told you I was going to be looking out for some more Harold Lloyd stuff. I only have Safety Last, but now I have Safety Last and The Kid Brother, which uh, is looks seems to be some kind of Western film, yeah. or at least small town with a sheriff. Um, which is not usually my bag, but I do like the kind of silent comedy era of filmmaking, so I'm excited to check that out. Like I said, these are kind of blind buys. I don't know a lot about these, but I just want to have these for my family to grow up with. There's not a lot of family-friendly movies <laughs> in the Criterion Collection, so I want to at least have all of those Yeah. while uh, while my kids are young. And I want to know what you think of that, because personally, I know I like Westerns a lot more than you do, um, and I'm just curious to see what a silent comedy sort of parody maybe of Westerns mm -hmm. looks like in the era in which Westerns were kind of the dominant uh, genre. Yeah, yeah. It says silent comedy legend Harold Lloyd goes west in this irresistible blend of action, romance, and slapstick invention. So cool. It yeah. almost sounds like it could be like a sort of like what Edgar Wright does where it's like a parody of a genre, but it's also a good example of the genre. Maybe as well. so. Yeah. Maybe so. That could be cool. And I like how the te the typography is like made to look like it's actually on the wood floor. Oh yeah, that's cool. In this little house that he's in, so very cool cover. And another gray cover. You'll see once I'm done with these that pretty much all the ones I bought today were gray covers. Joan of one. Passion of Joan of Arc. Speaking of black and white. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I found this. I haven't been able to find this at the first two stores. This was one that I had starred on my list that I absolutely had to get this month because we talked about it extensively in our pretty recent video about this film. I absolutely love this film. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it when I watched it. I don't know if enjoyed is the right word, but I really had a great, uh, a great experience with this film and I'm excited to finally own it. It was at like the previous story we went to, but the discard was damaged, so I didn't pick it up. I held off, and I'm glad I did because here is a pristine edition at this store, and I'm very happy to have it. Another gray spine. Next up is a blind buy. I know a little bit about this film. This is Miracle in Milan. This is a newer one, I believe. This came out in 2022. 
Oh, whoa. Wait, what's the spine number on it? This is 1,119. Whoa, that is recent. Very recent. Um, this is described as renowned filmmaker Victoria de Sica followed up his international triumph Bicycle Thieves with this enchantingly playful neorealist fairy tale in which he combines his celebrated slice of life poetry with flights of graceful comedy and storybook fantasy does that not sound like a film i would like that sounds like it was made specifically for you i had no idea that was made by the same filmmaker who made bicycle thieves that's 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 it's, awesome it okay sounds cool. great directed by uh yeah right here vittorio de sica and it says based on a novel so right there on the cover love the cover artwork love the illustrations another gray spine but some some lovely yellow font that carries throughout the design and uh it sounds like a film i'm, I'm absolutely gonna love so excited to check that one out Miracle in Milan. And then my last one, my seventh one for this day is... I finally got my hands on I'm it. So this was one that I was like curious about ever since... This is my third Criterion sale, by the way. Yes. Uh, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that. But this is... I, have, I haven't been collecting very long with the Criterion collection, but this is my third sale. I think I was curious about this one ever since the first sale. I think you I have believe been. I brought it up. I've since gained an appreciation for adventure films uh, more and more mm -hmm. ever since I got the uh, Harryhausen sets and I've been watching a lot of 50s and 60s sci-fi stuff. This is Robinson Crusoe on Mars. I'm so excited to finally have this. I love the bright red and pinkish hues on this one. This is not a gray spine. Uh, this looks very bright and vibrant on the shelf. And uh, I mean, this what, what, what could I want? This is like, it's literally, it's in the title. It's the Robinson Crusoe story, I'm assuming, just in space. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like, I mean, I bought this actually a year ago, probably during your first sale is when I got this. Yeah, yeah. It's Because we've talked about this for uh, several, for several, almost a year now. Yeah, it's retro futurism, baby. That's what I'm all about. It's got a monkey in <laughs> a spacesuit right on the front. Oh, look at that. Ape in a spacesuit right there. This might have to show up on our discussion show, Criterion Corner. Yes, pretty soon. Pretty soon. Because this looks like a lot of fun. Uh, the sticker's upside down on this one. I don't know why. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's a lot of bonus features on this one. Uh, bonus features are longer than the description of the film. Um, so that might tell you that this movie is more about the like special effects than the actual story. <laughs> but I'm all about that. And that, that sounds like a lot of fun. This is 1964. Sounds great. Sounds like a wonderful time. And... I'll let you know when I see it. Maybe we'll watch it uh, yeah, I together own it. at some point because you do own this one too. So very good haul. I am very happy with my picks this time. Like I said, see, so you got all the grays and then you got Nightmare Alley and then you got Robinson Crusoe right there. It's a little yeah. bit of red. I got a, You got a very colorful. Yes. Very colorful. Black and white. Bright gold. <laughs> look, at, look at that. Oh, I'm going to make And pink. Shine. Gold and pink. Yeah. Oh, they look so good together. And then a nice little color Rainbow. bar. Uh, green, yellow, orange, and other colors. So I love it. I love it. And just broadly speaking about this location, um, everything was in such nice condition. Um, they had a really yeah. nice selection. Um, and there was also like a great 4K selection. There was plenty of oak jaws and uh, virgin Almost suicides. Almost so close to getting oak jaw. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they only had one copy of Double Indemnity on Blu-ray and one copy of um, Shaft on Blu-ray. And I believe they probably had the 4Ks and, like, more selections of, you know, a higher number of stock. But I'm sure they probably just got sold out of all of them. I mean, it's July 9th. Yeah, I mean... Sales been going on for nine days. we got to get that mid-month restock. So yeah. We'll find some more things. But, uh, yeah, great store. One thing that we loved about the store is they didn't use the security alarm ugly oh thank god things that damage the cases at all instead what they did was they just keep the box sets behind the counter mm -hmm. which was lovely because you were able to walk up there and ask for the john casavetti's and they had one yes and uh i'm very happy for you so moving into our last store what are you thinking because i'm thinking a lot of the kind of more 4k titles i was gunning for they might kind of be a wash until the late until I have to go back home because of the way things get restocked. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I might actually just end up picking more of the things I wasn't thinking I would be going for when I came here. So I've got uh, quite a few things left on my list that I want to pick up: two box sets and uh, 
some of the more common uh, Blu-rays that I'm assuming are going to be sold out. I had like a Stalker I wanted to get, and I haven't seen that at any of the stores. I can't believe you haven't been able to find that anymore. That one sells out quick, man. But anyway, so this last store is my store. Mm. This is the one that's closest to my house. It's the one I go to all the time. All these other ones we've been traveling to, this one is my store. And I know that this store had the Jacques Tati box set a week ago before the sale started. So I don't know if it's still going to be there. That's def definitely one that I want to get. Like I said, I want to get Stalker. There's a couple other titles that I definitely want to get this month before you head out. So I don't know. It, it all depends on what people bought. They have a pretty good stock usually, but it all depends on how crazy the people in my area are about the sale. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I, 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 who knows? This is kind of like the last... I've been maybe holding back a little bit. Uh, who knows what I do at this last this last stop. So yeah, uh, stay tuned. We will be putting that next video up tomorrow. We'll see if he goes crazy and finally like out outdoes me on this last <laughs> sale. We'll see. But yeah, that was the third store haul. I think it was pretty good. You're happy with your haul? I am very happy with my haul. Like okay. I said, last one was a little bit of a bust. I'm happy you were able to find a lot of the things you were looking for that I don't think they even had here. They didn't have Darjeeling Limited or Bottle Rocket at the store, did they? Yeah, except for Incredible Shrinking Man. But yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy for you. Um, but with this, like, it was, I got a 4K, I got the box that I wanted, and I got Mishima. So, so you're happy. Success. Success. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. That is our third haul. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you have been picking up. Let us know what you think about these picks. If you've seen some of these, uh, don't spoil them, but let us know uh, what we're in store for because I am firmly in blind buy territory. I used to only buy things for the, from the collection that I had seen, but I've blown past that thanks to you. But uh, the sale is just too much fun. And I only buy Criterions twice a year because I keep it to the sale. So, so we're about to do our fourth store. Yeah. And uh, I hope it's a good one, man. It's going to be exciting. So tune in for that last video, and we will see you then. Bye. Bye, guys.